here in this first round of LAIC. Yeah, not traveling as much, but you see all of those results here uh, locally or in this in this region as well. And uh, to have that success and also to play with the variety of decks that we've seen. I mean, <laughs> Andre was playing Lost Zone Charizard at, at some of these events. Like, you can, you can pretty much do whatever you want once you figured out that deck. <laughs> And speaking of the decks, let's look at the decks that these two players have chosen to bring this weekend. We do see the Reggie Drago from Andre and the Origin Form Palkia from Gustavo. That's a deck we were both talking up a few moments ago. What do you think is going to happen here in this matchup, Kyle? Uh, it's it's such a fun one. Obviously, playing the Palkia V-Star, you know that you have uh, this, this tendency. When you go first, you can have a ridiculous turn with that... Uh, the Moonlight Shuriken continuing to just rain down and set up some pretty interesting stuff. The, the numbers tend not to work if you're going second. It can be a little trickier, but maybe if you can set up that 130 into the 90-90, you can knock out some Reggie Drago early on and really do some work. It definitely feels like a matchup that could be very close. I could certainly see it going either way. Can't wait to see what these players have in store for us and which one will come out on top here in Swiss Round 1. Who's going to start off this tournament at 1-0? No better way to start off a Pokemon TCG event. Yes, very excited to see both these players. You see Gustavo calm, cool, and collected. I feel like he's been here once or twice or <laughs> a time uh, probably or 20 times at this point, Chip. Yeah, he is as experienced as any player in the field this weekend. Certainly someone we're going to be keeping our eye on throughout the whole of the event. Excited to see this top tier matchup in round one. Excited to see these two players. Excited to see these two decks facing off. And it definitely feels like a matchup that can certainly go either way. It may come down to those opening draws. How quick can either player get started? If there is an opportunity to come back, you know, both of these players have, you know, interesting choices here. You know, the whole basis of the origin form Palkia V-Star is sort of to give up prize cards, use the Dusknoir, get some extra damage in play, you know, Iono, your opponent to a low hand size, but Andre here actually has a very interesting card inclusion. There's a pair of counter catcher in this list. Yeah, prepared to, to go down in prize cards earlier on, but that can be an issue as you see your opponents giving up some of these prize cards. So do you get to play from the back foot? It seems like Gustavo's going to have a slight advantage in that regard. A big deal will also, of course, be that coin flip. Who wins the flip? Who gets to go first? Of course, in the Pokemon trading card game, the player who goes first is unable to play a supporter card and unable to attack. But if you can go first and still get a good setup, if you have a ton of item cards in that opening hand, it can be a really, really strong opening. And here we go. Oh. Round number one. What do you see, Kyle? Jim, strong oh. opening. That's, a, that's, that's that's big words there, because that's a Kiram start. Yeah. And that is the one Pokemon you never want to see in the active. That is pretty tough to see the Kiram here with that Tri-Frost attack used as a very solid tech into those Lost Zone decks. And then, of course, if it's in your discard pile, you can Apex Dragon and copy it for, you know, just the three energy. You don't have to get the massive five energy cost on that Pokemon. Not going to be an option for Andre as he has started that Pokemon here. And look at these prize cards. Hold up. Hang on. Kyle. Let's take a look at this deck list. <gasps> we see a pair of fire energy in the prizes. <laughs> no way. He only plays two fire. OK, it, can you draw up a worse start for Andre here? Not only do you start the Kiram, you don't have access to the attack, but then you can't even use your Reggie Draco as an uh, attacker. You're all on Ogre Pond. It's got to be Ogre Pond attacks, but the way that the prize cards are laid out, He's never the gonna two up. fires are at the top of the prize card. Man, looks like we got a little bit of a technical issue here with the white noise for these players. So we'll take a second, but man, we, we might need a minute here, Chip, because that, that is a lot to take in looking at these prizes to start this game. Yeah, we, uh, we'll, we'll get into more detail here shortly. It looks like we do have a technical issue that is being addressed. And hopefully we can get back into the gameplay here. Not much to see from Gustavo's end. Of course, just a Dust Skull, probably one of the better options as a Pokemon to start with. It only gives up one prize if your opponent does attack into it. And if they don't attack into it, you can just blow it up on the next turn with the Cursed Blast if yeah. it becomes a Dusknoir. Always an easy retreat there. <laughs> we, we, we always love to see that. And it looks like we got a bit of a peek at the hand there for Gustavo, the Pokestop in there. So certainly some options to continue drawing. We love the, 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 the sheer aggression of this deck, Chip, just to have that opportunity to throw away a bunch of resources, find those items. But you're never losing them forever, are you? 
So Andre is the one going first here, does kick things off with the Nest Ball, searching the deck for any basic Pokemon, putting it directly onto the bench. It will be the choice of that Reggie Drago V. Of course, you have to get that Reggie Drago V in order to get into your main attacker, the Reggie Drago V Star, in future turns. It looks like an Earthen Vessel will be followed up here, discarding any one card from the hand in order to search the deck for two basic energy cards, ditching the Giratina V Star, finding a pair of Grass Energy, and then another Nest Ball to follow up. This opening hand does look really Really good for Andre, ignoring, of course, the prize cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah a, a bit of an issue there, but not going to give that away to Gustavo just yet. Continue to play your game, get these energies accelerated onto the board if possible, and certainly with that Teal Mask Ogre Pond, you'll see just that. Put on a Myriad Leaf Shower early and often, and hopefully it finds you the right pieces to at least compete in this game. Yeah, an interesting thing to note here as well as we do see the Teal Mask Ogre Pond using that Teal Dance, attaching a Grass Energy, and drawing a card. With the pair of Nest Ball in hand, Andre could have gone for the Squawk Ability, but has chosen to hold off. We actually see he's now drawn into it. What do you make of that, Kyle? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's a slower approach, but now you've got a, a, a consideration here. It's, is it the switch that we're looking for now, too? Because you have to move this Kiram at some point. You do have to find that switch at some point. Prime Catcher can also work, and uh, those are ways that Andre is going to be looking for to get this Kiram out of the active in future turns. It's an annoying Pokemon to have stuck in play, though. It now looks like we are kicking things over to Gustavo, kicking it off with a deck search. Going to take a moment to check the prize cards here, make sure he knows exactly what he has available, what he does not have available, as he is into the deck now with a Nest Ball, which will allow him to match some basic Pokemon from Andre's side. Of course, Origin Form Palkia V-Star aims to get tons of Pokemon into play to fuel its subspace swell attack. Yeah, not a, not terrible prices to see here. Of course, no access to the Greninja EX, which we've seen some players start to rely on in the early stages, getting those resources out early with the Shinobi Blade. But the two Pokestop, if this is an early stadium that's countered by your opponent, perhaps, maybe that could slow you down a bit. Yeah, he does only play three copies, so he may have a hard time finding just that one remaining copy in the deck. And Pokestop is pretty important for this Origin Form Palkia deck to you know, find more resources and find more access in future turns. It does look like Gustavo has that third copy in his hand. It has a Squawk Ability, but this is kind of a tough hand Ooh. to get rid of. He is going to choose to Squawk and Seize, and he's going to have to give up on a pair of Rare Candy to do it. Yeah, I mean, we talk about throwing away the resources here. With Pokestop, you get to bring those back, but if they're stuck in your hand when you're discarding, they are gone forever. So Gustavo's really going to take a risk here. Of course, still plays the, the, the four full copies of Rare Candy. So an opportunity to evolve these uh, these Dustnors later in the game, but you're really looking for basic Pokemon right here. Speaking of basic Pokemon, a way you can get some is with Hisuian Heavy Ball, provided one is in the prize cards. Gustavo will play that item card. Looking at the prize cards, it does look like he will find the Origin Form Palkia V. The Heavy Ball will now take its place in the prizes. And Gustavo will just take a moment to take note of what exactly he will not have access to until he starts to take KOs. Yep, great to see those Pokemon as soon as you can. Maybe that one of Buddy Buddy Poffin would be a nice find here. Still haven't seen a supporter yet as well. And the Pokestop we've seen looks like that's been used there too. So a uh, little bit more draw there. The Trekking Shoes to try to help. And he's going to have to keep a rare oh. candy. I don't even think I see an energy card. There's a Radiant Greninja in hand. He does have a supporter, however. Looks like we will see the Irida being played, allowing Gustavo to search the deck for a water Pokemon and then also an item card and add those to the hand. Yeah, very nice find. Of course, that's, a, that's a very helpful. And uh, there was a bit of a decision to be made there if you want to go for the Buddy Buddy. But when you see Radiant Greninja already in hand, you're just looking for some resources. You have that Earthen Vessel now. You can, you can get the ball rolling. Yeah, you want to get some energy cards in the discard pile so that you can use that Star Portal V-Star power on the next turn. Give yourself plenty of options to get your Pokemon, your main attackers, powered up. So getting some energy cards in the discard pile doesn't seem too bad. A pair now being added to the hand with that Earthen Vessel. Radiant Greninja onto the bench and Concealed Karge will ditch that energy. Drawing two, there's the Pheasantipity. It looks like another supporter for the next turn potentially as well being found. We see Rare Candy in the hand. We see Night Stretcher, so there's some plays next turn to go for the Cursed Blast. We know that he's got the Origin Form Palkia V-Star in hand lined up from the Irida. It feels like Gustavo's got a pretty solid game plan at this point. Yeah, <laughs> the one piece he might be missing is that second Duskull, but maybe you don't feel that much pressure from your opponent. You know that it's going to be that one pr Prime Catcher or the Switch, so if they have the Prime Catcher, you're at least moving that Duskull to the bench. 
Back over now to Andre, who kicks it off with an Ultra Ball, able to search the deck for any Pokemon at the cost of having to discard two cards from your hand. And I use the word cost very lightly here, especially <laughs> with a deck like Regidrago V-Star. You really want to get certain cards into your discard pile with this deck. Yeah, maybe that one that's in the active spot would have been a, a <laughs> great find. But uh, this is one that will help out as well. We see that Dragapult feature. And of course, it's a, it's a deck in and of itself to have the, the high hit points is a feature that a lot of players like. It's not going to be Andre, though. Just wants to get that into the discard pile very early for a potential copy when he finds a fire energy. And yeah, we do see energy switch in the hand. Hopefully here, Andre has taken note of those prize cards and will move the grass energy off of the Reggie Trago <laughs> over to the Ogre Pond. He's thinking through it. He does have energy switch in hand. Last card in hand in addition to the Dragapult is a research. And sure enough, we will see the Ogre Pond being powered up as an attacker. And I think with this research in the hand, kicking it back to last turn makes a lot of sense as to why we didn't see Squawkabilly come into play. Yeah, well, it's a, a great find here, and you still have some potential to work your way out of this mess, maybe get a nice attack to start things off, but this hand... No energy cards. That's not good. Not good at all. Very reliant on energy in order to get through the deck with the Teal Dance. He did find another Ogre Pond, which could be nice. Oh. He's going to go for the Pokestop here. Let's see what he's discarding. It's another energy switch. Oh, I know. Oh, he loses a V-Star to go along with it. And a Teal Mask Ogre Pond. Yeah, really was looking for an Earthen Vessel there. This is looking really tough. Yeah, energy switch should go to the hand. Good catch there from Gustavo. I think it might just have to be a pass. You can counter the stadium. I guess not giving your opponent access to Pokestop is pretty good because it is so valuable in the Palkia deck. And sure enough, Andre just with the pass, sitting back in the chair, not happy with the start thus far. And let's see what Gustavo Guada can make work for him in this turn. Yeah, really not feeling any pressure. We saw a huge head nod from Gustavo when the energy switch went to the Teal Mask Ogre Pond. So, oh, that's some information that I like to see there. <laughs> so plenty of plays potentially available here for Gustavo with the Irida in his hand. We could possibly see something like a counter catcher after using the Dusknor to curse blast, you know, give your opponent a prize card. He's going to start it off with an Ultra Ball, and we will indeed see another Dust Skull, something he would have liked to have had last turn. But since his active did not go down, doesn't mind it too much, you know, able to still bench it in order to utilize another Dusknor in the future. What do you think you'd like to see from Gustavo this turn based on what we've seen him line up? Yeah, I, there, there's an opportunity here if you can find a way to, to switch out your opponent's active Pokemon. Maybe that Prime Catcher would be uh, a huge find to, to deal some uh, some damage to a more relevant Pokemon in this spot. You're almost doing your opponent a favor if you move this Kiram right now. And it looks like Iono will actually be the supporter of choice here for Gustavo. We'll have both players shuffle their hands, put them on the bottom of the deck. Gustavo did not have a hand, so he just gets to draw a fresh six. Andre on the other side will only get six as well. Could have actually, from Gustavo, used the Dustnor in order to give Andre one less card, right? Uh, but I think maybe wanted to see what he had access to before he committed to where he puts the Cursed Blast damage, right? Yeah, the great thinking there. It's, it's difficult to make that decision when you don't have all of your cards to work with. So Gustavo wants to make sure that he has the resources. And right now it looks like he's trying to piece together the puzzle uh, there, there was also the opportunity to maybe find that counter catcher and, and take that knockout and then have that opportunity to move up an attacker, but we're not seeing the resources yet. Maybe the shoe can help? We're going to discard a nest ball, finding one more. I see an ultra ball there was the grab. Trekking shoe, such a nice option for these kind of faster decks. Able to just look at the top card. You can choose to either keep it or discard it, and then you get to take the next card. So you effectively can see two cards if you want to, as long as you don't mind discarding the first one. Wow, and look at this. There's not much to do. Just a, it looks like a pass of the turn okay. here for Gustavo. Really just trying to set up that perfect turn. Your opponent is stuck right now. Unless you see the switch, you see some a lot of additional help or maybe even a V-Star ability used on the next turn. It might be difficult to even get a relevant attack off. We are back over to Andre now, who is kicking off his turn. It looks like we've seen a teal dance in order to draw a card. Let's get down to that table so we can see what's happening here. It looks like a Earthen Vessel is an option in the hand. There's a Research as well. Another Nest Ball could get another Pokemon established. But it is something you want to think about, right? You don't want to go too wide with your bench 
in a matchup where your opponent's main attacker deals more damage based on how many Pokemon are on your bench. Yeah, so I think it's very heads up from Andre that he hasn't gone too wide yet. Do not walk into Palkia. A lot of players forget about that attacker, but sure enough, it's not just there to, to help spread around some of these water energies and help out. It was a mainstay of the format years back, and it still has that opportunity here now. Taking a moment here to search the deck. Let's see what he ends up going with. Which route does he take? Getting a pair of grass energy, it looks like now, from the Earthen Vessel. Uh, I don't think he's got another Teal Mask in hand. One got discarded and one sent to the bottom. He does have Nest Ball, so that can find another Teal Mask, and I think that is what we will see as Nest Ball is now being played. And sure enough, Teal Mask Ogre Pond EX hitting the bench. Yeah, we typically just don't see this opportunity from players to set up and charge up these Pokemon on the bench. But for Andre, it, you don't really have that much pressure from your opponent. They just pass the turn over. Yes, you're stuck there with the Kiram, but charge up these Pokemon. Have some opportunities to fight back and find that fire energy. A big find here for Andre was indeed the switch, which he does have, so we can get this Kiram out of the active. The problem here Ooh. now... <laughs> is that Dusknor has 160 HP. <laughs> a yep. little harder to KO than Dusk Duskull is. Is there any more uh, worse feeling than attacking into the Dusknor that wants to knock itself out <laughs> and you just wasted 120 damage? Yeah, I think that is exactly why we will not see Andre do that. <laughs> Maybe he's going to force Gustavo to get around this Curum. It's a little bit of a game of cat and mouse at this point, it almost feels like. And it, we actually are going to see the switch even hitting the discard oh, pile. Cool. Now, he could get it back with the Legacy Star if he wanted to, depending on what he finds on the draw here. I mean, we've seen a lot of resources already hit the discard pile. Gustavo is going to identify every one of those, every energy switch that you see. As soon as uh, you have to use that V-Star ability, you can start to pretty much line up what your opponent's got left. Back over now to Gustavo. We do see another Dusk Skull in the hand. That can be a nice replacement once you use this active Dusk Nor to put some damage counters on your opponent's side. It does look like we've got, I think, an Irida, so we could see one of those gusting item cards now be utilized, be it the Prime Catcher or even Counter Catcher. Yeah, the, the Counter Catcher, finding an opportunity to use that early on when you have the ability to... Uh, likely take a pretty strong advantage. Seems like a good idea, but if you want to hold on to your Dust Nor ability, then Prime Catcher seems like a good target. Yeah, and I think that this is something that Gustavo is now able to do due to the fact that Andre put another Pokemon in play. That is going to boost the damage now of this Origin Form Palkia V-Star up to 220. We'll be able to knock out either of these Teal Mask Ogre Pony X. Yeah, you, you, you're thinking to yourself, well, I need to have another attacker ready, but in doing so, you line yourself up for a play just like this. It just takes the one additional energy here from your V-Star ability to have the, the knockout lined up. Pink cards do a lot of work. Some of the strongest in the game right now, and we will indeed see Prime Catcher bringing up that Teal Mask Ogre Pawnee X from the bench to the active spot, and Gustavo will move his own Origin Form Palkia V-Star to the bench to the active, and we'll take the KO with Subspace Swell. Two prizes now for Gustavo, and as Andre here at this point, you've got two Fire Energies prized. I think your main chance in this matchup whenever you have bad prize cards like that is to be aggressive with Ogre Pawn. He wasn't able to do that. I think we've got to start considering packing it here pretty soon. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at opportunities here. You can't even knock out the Squawkabilly at a stage like this, and that's when you know that you're in a, a world of hurt. Yeah, it will be the draw here from the Teal Dance. He can attach one more energy card. That would boost the Myriad Leaf Shower up to doing a base of 150. Squawkabilly has the 160. Uh, you could do 210 damage to this active Origin Form Palkia V-Star. The math ain't math it, and chip. It's got a little bit more HP than that, so it's looking kind of tough, and I think Andre recognizes this is just looking rough. I, I really, you know, I think players need to be more conscious of the clock in situations like this. It feels so unlikely that he's going to be able to win this game from this board state. He does have counter catchers in hand, so maybe you play the counter catcher, take a prize on the Dust Skull or the Greninja, and you know, hope to take a fire off the prizes and then 
you know, maybe pack it up after you see you don't take a fire energy. <laughs> right. uh, we'll see exactly what he does. It looks like he will bring up the Palkia. You know, this is actually yeah. kind of interesting, though. Gustavo did use his Prime Catcher. That is usually the only way that these players have to switch their active. Yeah, it's just the one copy of Switch there for Gustavo, and he was not able to have that second water energy off the Star Portal, so it really slows down Gustavo. Typically, with a deck like this, you play that additional energy onto the Palkia, make sure it's no longer going to be an issue, and then you could, of course, just attack the next turn. This might buy Andre a turn right here, and that is big doings. It could make something happen. We will see that Pheasantipity EX hit the bench, which is very strong. You know, one of the, I, I consider a format warping card almost. This card is so incredibly strong. Using that ability, flip the script in order to draw three cards if your opponent took a knockout on their last turn. But it is another Pokemon in play which now means that the Origin Form Palkia V-Star can knock out this active. Yep, that's a dangerous Pokemon to play onto the bench. It lines up perfectly with a knockout right here. You play into the switch, but you also understand that this is your win condition. You have to continue to draw cards, find resources, and maybe establish a threat. <laughs> Where does this grass energy go? Are we attaching? <laughs> I mean, okay. you, you can make your Myriad Leaf Shower do even more damage. I think that's what we're doing, it looks like, playing the Nest Ball here. Just, we're all in. We are all in. It is this Ogre Pond or Bust at this point. We're going to see. I think the Flip the Script has not quite been used just yet. Has Mew EX even in order to draw a couple cards with Restart, then Flip the Script. So we got the engine kind of rolling here. We just don't have any fire energies to fuel it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, speaking of energies, I think that is number seven there. So without a super rod or maybe even a night stretcher just to find an additional energy, yeah. well, it looks like one more snuck right into the hand. Yeah, so he, I think, did just play the super rod literally to put three grass energies right back into the deck, recognizing at this point he is going to need energy cards in order to close this game out and have a chance. It will indeed just be the hit of the Myriad Leaf Shower, 150 damage into the Origin Form Palkia V. Gustavo was able to find one of those Pokestop off of the prize cards. He's going to use it now, discarding the top three cards of the deck and can put any item cards that he discards into his hand. Does get rid of that Blood Moon Ursaluna, which is normally a pretty good attacker. Not so much when your opponent hasn't taken any prize cards, though. Yeah, we see the switch in hand. I mm. think there's an opportunity for Rare Candy Dustnor, too, and that should line up for a win here. You have the, the Rare Candy Dustnor double knockout onto a bench Pokemon, knock out the active, yeah. and clear out with those four prize cards. Yeah, that is very strong there for Gustavo. Able to close this first game out. Really rough going for Andre. But Gustavo Wada coming away with a 1-0 start in this round one set. Yeah, it's uh, maybe not the way you envisioned this going for either player to start things off. Gustavo's ready for a, a challenge and runs into Kiram Pass on the yeah. other side, yeah. <laughs> fueled by grass energy. And for Andre as well, you're playing against one of the best players in the world, and you just can't find the resources to get the ball rolling. At least the benefit of packing it up in the middle of that game might be to Andre's benefit. Yeah, we still have got over 30 minutes, so can finish two games for sure. And we'll have to see what Andre chooses as far as first or second in this game. What do you like in this matchup as the Reggie Drago player, choosing first or second? Yeah, I, I, the, having the the opportunity to go first seems like a pretty strong uh, idea. You have the you have the opportunity to really capitalize and remove all the Duskull from play. If you can get that really early Kiram, Trifrost, and remove those Pokemon. If you are dictating how the prize cards go and not your opponent on the other side, you can get to a pretty clear advantage, and then they just don't have Pokemon to attack with Palkia and get the, uh, the maximum uh, damage output makes sense to me and I'm sure it'll make sense to Andre as well. I would also expect them to be choosing to go first here in this game number two and in this matchup. Players drawing their opening hands of seven cards. They must find a basic Pokemon, place it as their face down active and then set out those six prize cards. And we're gonna get into game number two here pretty shortly. Gustavo with a very similar start there with the Duskull and things are already looking much better for Andre here with the starter. Yeah, sign me up. <laughs> that, that is a great Pokemon to see there. The Kleppa, but this hand, this hand chip, that's it. That was the turn. Uh, yeah, bench, Reggie Drago V, attach and pass. Not how you draw it up without a doubt. Gustavo here already off to a much better start <laughs> with the turn one Irida. Oh, Andre looks up to the sky, is looking for answers. He's not seeing it right now. <laughs> Gustavo has it all, not only the Duskull as a great starter, but to find the Irida, potentially that 1-1 one, one buddy, 
the one buddy buddy poffin, whatever it may be, to help accelerate this board state. You could be in for another uh, another tough game. Yeah, it could be a quick one here potentially. It looks like Gustavo will just grab the Radiant Greninja, a really strong Pokemon to get established early, so you can use Moonlight Shuriken, you can draw cards, but of course also get yourself some energy cards into the discard pile. And then also is going to be paired with the Nest Ball, which can help him to get at least a basic Pokemon into play. Tells me maybe it's going to be a Palkia, right? You know, the Buddy Poffin obviously makes sense if you want to fill your board with a bunch of Dust Skulls, but a lot of times you just need to get that Palkia down so that you can guarantee get a Palkia V-Star potentially on the next turn. Yeah, it, it could also be that Squawk ability we've seen some players start to lean towards, especially when you have so many water energies in hand. But, ooh, to run into the double Night Stretcher when yeah. you've prized two, it looked like? Yeah, I think that is correct. I don't think we'll be expecting to see a Squawk and Seas uh -uh. <laughs> at this point. Night Stretcher is such a strong card in this deck. You're able to squawk a Billy away, resources. You're able to poke a stop away, Pokemon or energy cards. You know, concealed cards away, your energy cards. And then Night Stretcher just gives you access to those cards later on. So having a pair in your opening hand is definitely not something you're going to want to be discarding. Slow and steady here, but it looks to be enough. Okay, we do see a top deck of an Earthen Vessel. Can at least get another attachment, then the hand down. We'll go for the Grasping Draw. It's still not amazing for Andre, but the fact that you get to use the Cleffa here, I don't think you feel terrible about it. I mean, if you can play the game from a low board like this, that's pretty strong into Origin Form Palkia. Yeah, you know what's devastating about this is that there's an opportunity for Andre. As long as you had Reggie Drago V-Star, you potentially are taking a huge opening setup there. You could do a devastating amount of damage, but instead, it just has to be the Cleffa, slow and steady, but... These prize cards, they're they are not the best. Yeah, not the best. We do see that Prime Catcher being prized. One of those Iono could be a big deal. It does look like he is playing two copies of Dragapult EX, so one of those being prized. Not too big of a deal. That's the exact reason why players choose to play two copies of that main attacker, quote-unquote, in their Reggie Drago V-Star deck. And then the Radiant Charizard as well. That can be a really strong finishing option. Yeah, when you have the fire energies, I've heard those are pretty strong. And Andre, Andre took an extra second to, to look over that card, almost just giving it a little bit of respect as he, he forgot how much he missed it. We're actually going to see Andre here just burning some cards out of the hand in order to get more value from the Grasping Draw. Retreats the Cleffa to the Bench Reggie Drago, switches back into that Cleffa immediately, puts down that Temple of Sinnoh, a tech for that Lugia matchup most often, and drawing five cards with the Grasping Draw, not too bad. Sometimes the best use of your resources is to burn them to find new ones, and this hand is looking a little better, and of course, that's when your opponent Iono's. <laughs> yep, and that is exactly what we will see from Gustavo. Iono will send both players' hands to the bottom of the deck. They will each get six cards, as they both have six prize cards remaining right now. And I will say this could be a little precarious for Andre. I mean, there is a world where Gustavo could knock out this Reggie Drago V this turn. Yeah, uh, we're not that far away. We see Trekking Shoes, Ultra Ball, Poke is Stop in this hand. It is far from over this turn, and uh, it just takes, what, Rare Candy, uh, a, a Counter Catcher, Prime Catcher, whatever it may be, to put on a devastating amount of pressure. It even has the Dusclops, so that is another way you could get some damage into play. Put that Reggie Drago V down to one. 60, which or 170, which I think with a prime catcher or counter catcher would still be enough for a full bench Palkia to get the knockout. So it is te definitely possible. Ooh, There's a rare so candy. Big. Not only to find that rare candy, but the earthen vessel too for some additional draw with the radiant Greninja having that energy for the turn. If you don't want to use the star portal just yet, I think we're still missing the origin form Palkia V star. So that might be one of the missing pieces here. Also, I don't know if he has counter catcher or Prime Catcher just yet. Not yet, not that so I've seen. I think it's going to be a little difficult for Gustavo to pull it off unless he has a miracle two cards off of this Radiant Greninja. I think it would need to be literally an out to the Palkia and then also a gusting card. And we see the Ultra Ball, but no Prime Catcher, no Counter Catcher. So might just have to be playing it slow. Yeah, I mean, at, at, a, at a point like this, do you just use the Dustnor and place down the damage on Drago, even if you can't get the full effect from it. We also could see him thin the hand down and put Mew into play. And Chip, is there an opportunity for Moonlight Shuriken here to just get the job done? We see two water energy in the discard pile. Yeah, we could set up for some knockouts in the future. It does have Ultra Ball. Okay. 130. Yeah, it could 
possibly close out the game this turn. Yeah, I mean, we, does he have enough energy in the discard pile? That's the only question there's, here. There's two water energy there. There's one water energy in the hand. I feel like there's enough to get the job done. 130 damage can be placed onto the Reggie Drago V of Andre. And that would leave it with just 90 HP remaining. <laughs> Taking it slow, but you want to make sure you've got it right here. I think is, is there the is there the ultra is, was he the does, ultra ball needs, there for the V star? He, I guess he got he didn't rid have of the ultra ball. He got rid of the ultra ball. Interesting. We're gonna see the draw. There's Greninja. No origin form Palkia V star. I don't think he could have. I get, yeah. I, I, what I, was the other card in hand? I think it was something he couldn't discard. Maybe it was the dust glops. No, I feel like you could have just kept that. Oh, he's gonna pass. <laughs> I think he could have done it. There was it. a turn there, Chip. It was there. <laughs> unless unless there's... I mean, we saw the prize cards. He it, may not have had enough cards to Ultra Ball. That could have been maybe the issue, well, but... The, that's the thing. Then you, he restarts you, you re, He restarted with one card in hand. He'd yeah. have Ultra Ball right there. We are going to see Andre get another turn here, perhaps not realizing how fortunate he may be at this point. It will be the Nest Ball grabbing him Teal Mask Ogre Pond EX, putting it onto the bench. Yeah, there were two Ultra Ball in hand. I feel like there was a, 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 a opportunity, but we'll see if Andre's able to capitalize on this. This is the setup you're looking for now. You uh, you have a clean Reggie Drago, the fire energy intact. You didn't have to use any energy switching to get the job done to have a relevant attacker, but do you have an evolution? Not yet, but we got a couple supporters, so we still have plenty of time to find one. Ultra Balls are outs. Reggie Drago V-Stars themselves are outs. We also have the replacement stadium, which is kind of nice here. Anytime you can limit the Palkia player from having access to their Pokestop, it's not too bad. That's exactly what we will see. Getting rid of the Pokestop, putting the Jamming Tower in play, and Professor's Research discarding the hand to draw seven. Looking for a Reggie Drago V-Star here. Is he able to find it? There's an Ultra Ball. Ooh, you love to see the Ultra Ball in the window. Quite Three a of them, few though. Ultra Ball. This is a way you can actually get another attacker into the discard pile. I don't know what attacking options have been discarded up to this point, so that is something to consider as well. And yeah, now you start to have considerations for how many Pokemon is too many onto a bench like this. You want to have an opportunity to have a second Regidrago V so you can evolve into that V-Star, but do you walk into uh, a, a major issue here if your opponent does have that other rare candy, that other Dusknoir, and they clear out this Regidrago V-Star next turn. We are indeed going to see the Dragapult EX be discarded, the best attacking option in this deck, without a doubt, in most scenarios. It's one of the things that makes this deck so strong is that you have so many different options at any given turn, at any point in the game. And it will be the evolution. Are we going to see that Legacy Star V-Star power be utilized? That's the thing I want to see. Oftentimes, if you can save it, you really want to but Andre may be forced to dig for another Pokemon to put down. Looks like the answer is no. We're not going to establish another Regidrago V. And it's going to be the Cursed Blast. It's going to, uh, sorry, it's going to be that Phantom Dive taking out the Dusclops, uh, the Duskull and the Dusknoir being able to get rid of the Cursed Blast option in future turns for Gustavo. And now back over to Gustavo facing a two prize deficit here. What is he going to do with this turn as he kicks it off with the Nest Wall? And immediately we see that Pheasantipity EX being grabbed. Yeah, I mean, what a what a comeback there from Andre to not only have the, the response, but to remove both of these Pokemon from play. You need the opportunity to, to use the Dusknoir to take a knockout on a Pokemon like this in one hit. It's too difficult to reach those numbers with the Palkia V-Star. And that's, I guess, why Andre didn't feel the pressure to use that Legacy Star V-Star power to dig for another Regidrago V. He knows that there's no way that Gustavo can reach for a one-hit KO on this high HP Pokemon right now. Gustavo uses that flip the script, draws three cards. We are going to see the Irida now searching the deck for a water Pokemon and an item card, adding them to the hand. This can finally find that origin form Palkia V-Star. Mm, uh, is it too late, though? At this opportunity, you're walking right into the Regidrago. If there's a... A, a, a big attack waiting in the wings. Maybe a Giratina V-Star hits the discard pile. You're going to be uh, down to two prize cards remaining for your opponent, and that is a really tough comeback to the spot. Thinking through what to grab, it will indeed be that Origin Form Palkia V-Star and the Ultra Ball. I don't think Gustavo would mind getting another Dust Skull into play this turn. Speaking of which, there it comes from the Night Stretcher. 
We will see Mew EX using that free retreat to get into the Origin Form Palkia V-Star. Not even going to utilize the Star Portal. It's not necessary at this point. It's just going to be that KO. Or not the KO. It's just going to be the hit. Excuse me. <laughs> we with, wish. Yeah. yeah, with the subspace <laughs> swell. I'm so used to, you know, so many years of Origin Form Palkia V-Star being dominant in the format. Usually when it's attacking, it's taking a KO. And I'm sure that's what Gustavo would have liked. But this hit is still really strong because with the bench of the Dust Skull, you could potentially set up for a Curse Blast knockout. Right. You, you, I mean, you avoid your opponent having that Phantom Dive opportunity to take a knockout on the active, also remove the Dust Skull. It feels like a wasted turn just to damage into the Palkia that could eventually be moved or uh, you swap your attacker into that other uh, origin form Palkia. You still have your V-Star ability to retrieve those water energies once more and it's it doesn't exactly all line up just yet here for Andre. And this is the issue when you're playing the uh, the focus on the counter catchers because now you're way too far ahead. We are seeing that Legacy Star V-Star power being utilized. Seven cards discarded. Now any two cards from the discard pile can be added back into the hand. Did discard a super odd, which is always something that's kind of annoying to discard, I think, uh, without getting use of it. But what are, what are the two most valuable cards here for Andre in his discard pile? That's the question. Right. I mean, that's, that's the issue with the super odd is do you now have to add that in in combination? Right. But we, it's, it's tough to say. I didn't, it's not like we've seen a prime catcher that's in the prize cards. Uh, actually, I think it's in his hand now. <laughs> oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, he took it, thankfully. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that works out. <laughs> yeah, so he's got that option now. Could have, of course, used the Prime Catcher and then used Legacy Star afterwards. But I don't know that he wants to Prime Catcher anything. I think just dealing with this active Palkia seems pretty good. He may just want to make sure he can guarantee get that Giratina V-Star in the discard pile. I don't think we've seen it hit the discard pile just yet this game. So that's something to be thinking about. Yeah, plenty of ways to discard uh, in this deck. The Ultra Ball, of course, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. As you're looking for the Pokemon, you might want to be throwing into the discard pile. So a combination of those cards get the job done, or we'll see if that's already a card available in hand. And it looks like the two cards grabbed from the Legacy Star will most likely be the Iono or the and the Earthen Vessel. Ah, uh, looks, looks like the Giratina is hanging out there in the hand. We can see the Radiant Charizard come into play. That's something that can get worked in as a strong attacker in the future. I think, is that a Regidrago, uh, yeah, actually? Yeah, now, now I'm second-guessing myself. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Regidrago. And is the Giratina... Oh, it may actually already be in the discard pile here, Kyle. Man. It's so tough to tell. <laughs> but that is the main, that is the attacker I think he would like here, right? You do have to lock right. on a couple of energy, which is a, a little bit of a drawback. But getting rid of this Palkia, the only real threat right now for Gustavo would be so good for Andre. You need that zoom feature. <laughs> <laughs> so difficult to track as we see now Andre has to consider what, how do I close out a game like this really valuing that Radiant Charizard, the fire energy attached there. It's a, it's a big commitment but you know how you want to close this out and it looks like the prize map ends up working out there too if you go this route. Yeah, this will work out nicely. He's already taken two, so if he can take two on this active, he can then take out the Mew with the Charizard to close out the game. We're actually going to see the Prime Catcher being utilized right now. This could be because there is no Giratina in the discard pile, which in which case you could go for the bring up of the Mew, use Dragapult, maybe spread 30 onto each of these Palkia so the Charizard can knock either of them out. That seems pretty decent. Yeah, you could also go for... Knockout. You just if you if you take the Mew and the Duskull here, you just get your opponent down to the, the, you're you're down to one prize card remaining. It means that there's no opportunity to use that benefit of the Dusknor and curse blast your way to these great board states. Yeah, I think Andre must have switched in that Cleffa really fast and switched it back. Surprise. Is, uh, <laughs> we do see the Reggie Drago V Star will be the attacking option will be the use of Iono here, sending both players' hands to the bottom. Now Andre will only get four cards. Gustavo's still getting six. There's an Ultra Ball. And at this point you would think, okay, do I need another Regidrago V? But I think Andre has kind of properly identified he doesn't need another Regidrago V uh, to close out this game. He can attack with his Regidrago V star in the active and then close things out with his Radiant Charizard if he sets up his damage correctly here. Let's see where he goes with this Phantom Dive. Yeah, I think you have to take the Duskull in this instance and just play to 
what boss's orders to maybe take out a Pokemon like that reading for Do you have for to the take the Dust Skull here? That might, that, I think that's what he's thinking, because if he sets up 30-30 on each of the Palkia, that's the Charizard win con, right? Yeah, but you can walk into a, a, a Dusnor Curse Blast yeah, on the next turn. Yeah, and then turn, they knock out your Charizard. It's a free prize. It's, it's, a, it's a difficult decision to make, surely. Yeah, it looks like he wants to go for a bit of that spread. Okay. And we'll put 10 on the Pheasantipity. That means that it can be knocked out by a Phantom Dive with Regidrago V-Star if somehow Gustavo gets around this active. I feel like Gustavo's going to want to knock out this active. And we actually see the push of the Radiant Greninja right away. Yeah, this is my play right here. You could go for the Radiant Charizard yeah. and actually take the three-prize knockout right here. In combination with Iono, you have to feel like that is a devastating shift. Uh, and let hold on now. If Gustavo finds Dusclops... He Ooh. can win the game because he can knock out the Puffa yeah, as well. <laughs> oh, wait, no, sorry. Well, I mean, Gustavo has six prizes, you'll, but you'll he, have, he, yeah. he would be so far ahead, yeah. <laughs> I guess you don't want to give up just the, uh, <laughs> you don't want to give up the Dusclops prize. If, you, if your opponent just finds grass, grass, you're in a, a bit of an issue there, but well, even just one grass at this point. This, Regardless, though, this is a very strong play here for Gustavo. He's going to knock out this Charizard, going to knock out the... Regidrago V-Star. It's going to limit Andre's options completely. He'll only have this Teal Mask Ogre Pond. There's not like a Briar in this deck list or anything like that. Gustavo wouldn't even be at two prize cards, so it wouldn't matter too much. Yeah, and this is an issue with the, with the previous play. If you take that Duskull knockout, there is no opportunity for this Radiant Greninja play. You're, you're, your opponent's down to one prize card remaining. There's no world where they promote a Pokemon with 130 HP into a, a grass away from losing the game. Gustavo just having to think through how is he closing it out? How is he going to fight back here? This is definitely a, a come from behind game here for Gustavo. And we do see that Dusknor being grabbed. Yep, at some point you're considering just avoiding giving your opponent free prize cards, but it can be a great way to close out games too. Might as well give yourself the additional hit points there yep. and help, your, help yourself out in all the instances you can, but my goodness, when you get to apply weakness here and take a three-prize knockout, sign me up. Oh, and that's a pretty good draw, though, for Andre. Does have the research, but has already used Prime Catcher, so he won't be able to go after something with the Charizard if he drew into, like, Super Rod plus Nest Ball and the, the Energy Search. Yeah, this is going to be tough here for, for Andre to close out. He seemed like he was in such a strong position. Is he going to be able to do it here? I don't know that there's a super strong option. I mean, what, what else do you do at this point, Chip? You just have to throw it on energies on Teal Mask and go for it. Yeah. It's... Just <laughs> turn yourself into an old Mewtwo war and <laughs> just charge up and giddy up. We are going to see that Teal Dance drawing a card here. It's going to be a super, super rod. rod. is actually pretty helpful with the amount of grass energy you need to target down to close out this game. You might as well just fill your deck with them. Yeah, but I just don't know what he's going to KO is the problem. You can get through a Palkia if you just keep going. You're yeah, but he can't gust it this turn, and Gustavo can win the game next turn if Andre doesn't take a knockout here. That's uh, the I thing, right? Andre, the, the, Andre the has to take a prize here, uh, and if he doesn't, that means Gustavo has access to using the Dusknor. Uh, there's just... Yeah, it, the energies are just a little bit short of taking the knockout on the Dusknor to avoid those issues. That would have been a, a big, well, big maybe way to close out. What, uh, what Andre could do, I guess, would just be to, with this super odd, put back Charizard and the fire energy and then take the knockout with on the active with the Teal Mask. So your opponent still has three prize cards. They can't use their Dust Nor anymore. Sure, they can maybe knock out your Teal Mask. Uh, but if you only have a couple Pokemon on your bench, they can't even quite get there to knock out the Teal Mask. And then they can't use their Dust Nor because you only have one prize card left. And then you have Charizard to potentially be your, your option to close out the game. Oh, counter catchers and bosses orders. All the cards that would have been helpful had it not been that this you're uh, you're already ahead and you've used your supporter. He's got Ultra Ball in the hands. It does look like another super rod, so Radiant Charizard could still be a live play in the future. Yeah, I think just attacking I think you into this active, and you feel like this Ogre Pond is probably going to be safe here, right? You have to pass the turn and force your opponent to have a way to move the active, the, the Teal Mask into the active, because you at least have the protection. I mean, 
Gustavo's got a pretty big hand. <laughs> I, I don't think he's used prime catcher this game, right? Right. So I don't know. I, th I think you've got to take the knockout here. <laughs> here we go. He's going for it. I mean, this teal mask does not get knocked out by a Palkia. It's 130 down to just one prize card remaining here. Gustavo is going to promote this Palkia. Debating which one to send up, it will be the one with the 50 damage on it. Draw for turn is a rare candy. Indeed, there is that Prime Catcher waiting in the hand. That Dustnor on the bench now completely useless since Andre Ooh. took that prize card. Ooh. And here comes, is this the Big Bear? We did. I did forget to consider the Big Bear as the option here. Yeah, the Blood Moon Ursa Luna is a great closer in spots like this. And you really just, there's so much to consider going into the match like this. You're, you're trying to piece together all these different win scenarios. And when you don't have access to that dust nor how do you reach that damage cap? It has to be the Blood Moon or Saloon. And here as well, I don't think Andre played that extra super rod he drew into, did he? Because I think the Radiant Charizard is still in the discard pile. I think the Fire Energies are still in the discard pile. He's got super rod. He's got Earthen Vessel. He's got Ultra Ball in the hand, but... If Gustavo plays an Iono, puts Andre down to just one card, he's going to be relying on Flip the Script to get a lot of pieces back here. Looking for some assistance, has the Radiant Greninja, and looks like Iono's in the hand. Yeah, I was going to say Gustavo needing an uh, energy card here, but he actually doesn't even need the energy. The, the bear can attack for free because Andre has taken five prize cards. And with five prize cards being taken, he will get just one card here. And this is where, yeah, if he had played that super odd, put back the fire energy, put back the Radiant Charizard, he'd have a real live draw here to potentially close this one out. But I don't know that he's going to be able to do it. Yeah, I mean, w what combination do you need at this point from the, the one card, the Fezzendipity as well? It has to be a, a miracle draw to, to find a close out here, even though you're just one prize card away. Now, the game doesn't necessarily guaranteed end on Gustavo's next turn, right? Because the Blood Moon Ursa Luna can't attack in consecutive turns. Uh, he would need to find his Prime Catcher. He does still have it in the deck, though. So I think he's probably going to be able to dig for it. Let's see what the draw is here for Andre. It's a Reggie Drago V-Star. Not going to be super helpful. Three cards from Flip the Script incoming. And it's going to have to be the three best possible cards. I don't even know if there is a three-card combination that gets him there. Yeah, it would have been with that Radiant Charizard play, but these are not the pieces you can, you can motivate. <laughs> we, we can see a, see a Teal Dance, draw one more card, see if you can find something else. I mean, you can always go for the Grasping draw, you know, force your opponent to have the Prime Catcher. Gustavo does not have it necessarily guaranteed. We feel like he'll have a good chance to get it, but... Andre does not necessarily know, and there is also, of course, a chance that that Prime Catcher could be the final prize card for Gustavo. Right, with with the cards that we see in hand, we see that that Pokestop, the, the Trekking Shoes as well. Believe the deck is at four or five cards right now, so should have the opportunity to, to go for it. And Andre is identifying that uh, it is go time here as well. Need to find a a medley of resources. Yeah, and maybe with they didn't even find the Super Odd. Oh, he was actually pretty close with the Mew. If the, you've got double energy switch with the oh. the, 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 the Ogre Fawns. Yeah, I mean, it still doesn't quite knock out the Blood Moon, though. It's got a beefy 260, right? Yeah. So, wouldn't even have <laughs> even quite been there. <laughs> yeah, Radiant Charizard doesn't knock out the Blood Moon. He would have had to have found Radiant Charizard plus the boss's orders, of course. Man, what a turnaround here. I, I feel like we could have called this game either way a few times. And sure enough, here we are in the what looks to be the final turns here now. Andre trying to piece this together. He sees some ways to close out the game in those double bosses orders holding on in the top six. But are you going to have that opportunity here? Yeah, I think we'll just be seeing the grasping draw and Gustavo immediately showing he's got the game winning pieces. Prime Catcher able to close things out. And it will be Gustavo Wada getting the 2-0 victory here in round number one over Andre Imada. What a game, what a set, but a pretty decisive victory for Gustavo. Yeah, that was a pretty great showing from both our players. Of course, Andre was fighting a lot of adversity to even get to this point in the game. Yeah, no but, kidding. Put on a great show in that second game. And I mean, there was... 
There was a lot happening there. I feel like Gustavo may have let that one slip, but then sure enough, found a beautiful way to uh, set up a, a nearly checkmate situation there at the end. Yeah, we may have to go back and analyze that one because it did feel like Gustavo maybe had a chance to just close out game two right away, right? Uh, we didn't see that happen. And then Andre, maybe if he plays that in game a little bit cleaner, right? If he plays that super odd, just put back the Radiant Charizard. You know you're going to probably get Iono'd. You've got boss's orders in the deck. If you put back that Charizard, you put back the fire energy, you give yourself the opportunity to draw that, and then all you need to do is find the boss's orders, and you can maybe close out that game. Yeah, I mean, we, we were really going back and forth in that last game. There was, I mean, that, that one pivotal turn that we saw there where you're making the decision of, do I take that additional prize card back and forth? There were like eight different opportunities that we saw there, and we went over just about all of them. Yeah. There, there's a lot of benefits to, to those plays and we, we saw some of the issues that come along with it too it, you have to avoid giving your opponent the opportunity to dust more though I feel yeah. like that is a, a huge way to give your opponent that window to sneak back in and it, 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 it led to some issues at the end. And the, well, that's what Andre was trying to do throughout the game, right? Deny Dusknoir. We saw it right at the beginning. He takes out the Dusknoir uh, Dust on the active and takes out the Dust Skull on the bench, right? 